Hi, this is Boone Slot Car Garage. Let's do this. Hi, this is Boone. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, well, tonight we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of step away from the scenery for a bit. And we're going to go ahead and build ourselves something. So what I want to build tonight is a scaffolding because I have this little guy that's got a camera. And he needs a scaffolding to get on top, right? So he can go ahead and film the cars going by and stuff like that. So every track needs a camera guy on top of scaffolding. So let's do this. All right. So let's get all the things together that we need to, in order to build our scaffolding. So first off, more important than anything is that we have our guy and we have our camera and he's got his little battery box, but this is the guy that we need to build this scaffolding for. So first off, we need our camera guy. If you don't have a camera guy, that's okay. Build the scaffolding, get the camera guy later. But we got our camera guy, so so we got our camera guy. So second thing we're gonna need to do is go ahead and get some shish kebab sticks. And these shish kebab sticks you can pick up at a grocery store or even a hobby store. Um, I picked these up at Ikea, and I believe so, yep, Ikea. So even Ikea has shish kebab sticks. So we have our shish kebab sticks. What we have here is what they call a flat toothpick. And you can see that they're rounded at one side and pointed at the other. Now, um, you can use just regular uh, quarter style balsa. You know, I think it's like quarter by uh, 1 32nd uh, balsa. But for this adventure, I'm just going to go ahead and use these and the shish kebab sticks for the material that I'm going to use for this. So go ahead and put that there. So we got that. Now we also need a little bit of sandpaper to dress up our edges where we cut, uh, a saw, a little X-Acto knife, or what I have are some snips. And these are for cutting molding, and they're, they're great. I mean, you can just cut right through this with no problem at all. But if you don't have any of those, uh, an X-Acto knife or a saw is will do wonderful. So we have that, Give me a little writing utensil, a ruler, and we're gonna go ahead and glue this all together with some gel super glue, and I got some Gorilla Glue there. And we're gonna use our magic uh, baking soda for our catalyst. And that's just going to help us go ahead and get these joints together and get them dried real quick. So we come back. Let's go ahead and let's start building ourselves a scaffold. Okay, I don't do this very much, but if you noticed in the first clip that we did this, I was going to use these flat toothpicks on our scaffolding. Well, I didn't use them. So what did I use in place of these? I used this. And what this is, is one eighth by uh, three fourths inch balsa. And this was what I used in place of these for the planking on the scaffolding for the decks. And uh, it just, it's a lot nicer. It turned out a lot nicer using this. Um, so, on the previous clip where I showed you guys these flat toothpicks, these flat toothpicks are great and you can use them for all sorts of different things, but we'll get rid of those. I did not use them for this project. So I want to make sure that I put that out there on this and uh, sorry about the misinformation on that, but there we go. So we use this, not the other stuff. All right. so. Like I said, let's go build this scaffold. All right, so first thing what we need to do. Well, I like to go out and get myself something to reference by. So it doesn't matter if I'm building uh, a billboard or, or anything. I like to actually have some type of visual aid to look after. So 
I went ahead on my tablet and I found myself a picture of a scaffold. And if you punch in like, you know, scaffolding for cameraman or something along those lines, you know, you'll start to find a bunch of different photos of different scaffolding. And this is kind of the type that I like to go ahead and build. And you can see that it has the preformed sides and it has the X braces that go through. And then we'll go up and we'll make ourselves a railing and everything else. Now, I'm gonna build this where it's two tiers. So it's gonna have this tier and plus another one. So it's, you know, it's gonna stand up a little bit. I don't want anything that's gonna be huge, um, but you know, I want it a little bit further up than just, you know, sitting on the ground more or less. So this is the scaffold that I'm gonna go ahead and, and use as reference. And uh, we might make some changes as we go along, but it, it's nice to have some type of base point to go off of. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off so it saves my battery on that, but it's stored. And uh, what do we need to do? Well, first thing we need to do is we have our ruler out and we're gonna start with our shish kebab sticks. And the other thing, oh, there's my writing utensil. But you'll notice I got another guy that joined the party. So this guy, what I'm gonna use him for is just for height reference. Now, we could go ahead, we can measure this all out and everything else, but I like to have as much visual aid as I can. It just, it just helps. So what this guy stands at, if we just take his head and not the bottle, but just the head, he's right around five and a half centimeters. So what I like to do is go ahead and kick that up just a little bit, a half centimeter. So I'm going to make my uprights at six centimeters. And that'll, at, at the uh, five and a half, puts this guy roughly about uh, six feet tall in um, one thirty second scale. So at a... Uh, at a full six is probably putting this scaffold the uprights at roughly probably right around seven feet so you know that'll that'll work that'll definitely work so i'm gonna go ahead and set him off to the side so we have our uprights we're gonna be at um what i say i said six yeah <laughs> six centimeters so our width so we're gonna go ahead and cut our lengths and our width is gonna be at eight centimeters. So it'll make it a little bit more of a rectangle as it goes up. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get my shish kebab sticks out and I'm just gonna go ahead and measure them out at the six centimeter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and mark it here at the six. Now, depending on how many levels you're gonna make is all dependent on you know, how many lengths you're gonna have to make. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and uh, cut out eight of these to start out with. So I have one at each corner and times two. So that gives me my, the eight that I need for my uprights. And we come back, I'll have those cut and then we'll figure out our cross braces. All right, so now I have all my uprights cut. And so we have all those sitting there. And now I went ahead and also cut my cross supports at eight centimeters. So these guys are at six, these guys are at eight. And you might be asking yourself, Boone, why are you cutting your upright separate? Why don't you just run one piece all the way up? Well, you could do that and you know, it, it would work. Uh, what I like to do actually is to connect these two you know, like so. And the reason for that is for myself, it just gives that little extra little bit of detail. When I glue that together, it's gonna have a seam right there. It's gonna look like there was two pieces that were put together like a scaffold and it's connected together. But by all means, if you wanted to go ahead and just run one of these sticks, you know, instead of each one at, at six, you know, run it at 12. Or if you wanted a three span, you know, running it at 18 centimeters. Uh, by all means, that's, you, you can do that. It's just for myself, I like to have that little bit of a seam right between the two. And I don't know, I get, I get kind of weird that way sometimes, but 
yeah, it's all right. But I went ahead and I got those cut and I have my cross braces cut. So if we just kind of do a, a slight mock-up, let me get these guys out of the way. And if we figure that we're gonna have this setting there, and the cool thing about these cutting pads is that it has a grid on it. So we can utilize this grid to our advantage and uh, see here, so we put this guy right up on top and get that guy like so. There we go. We've got our basis of how we're gonna do it. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and make sure that all my lengths are equal, okay? This is important because as we build this, if you're off a little bit and you start going up, if it's off a little bit, you're gonna start to see that as it starts to, uh, as you start to build it. So what we need to do is make sure all our lengths are the same length. And if uh, you have something that per se, let's see here, we get these two together. They're actually really close, but if it is per se off just a little bit, just go ahead and take your sandpaper, sand that down until they're both equal. But make sure you do the same you know, same length throughout the whole entire thing. So you'll want to make sure that you check them all against each other. And that goes for your uprights and also your cross braces. So once we have that all done, what we can do is let's go ahead and let's start building this portion of it. All right, so now we're ready to go ahead and start building some of the structure, some of our scaffolding. Now what I've done is I'm using my, my cutting board with the grid that's on it so I can go ahead and match these up equally on both sides and use the little squares as, as right angles for me. So that way I can make sure that everything is going to be, you know, it's, it's going to be true. So what I've done is went ahead and laid a piece of plastic, clear plastic, over the top of my board. And why I've done that is because if I drip any of my super glue, you know, down onto the board, it's protected. And uh, I can just take this piece of plastic that's on here and throw it away after I'm all done. But it preserves your board and, you know, these aren't terribly expensive, but then again, they aren't, you know, terribly cheap either. So, you know, any way that you can protect uh, that would be great if you had a real thin paper that you could place on there and actually see the grid you know that would work too or even wax paper would work so enough about that <laughs> so what I've done is go ahead and tape these into place so now it's all secure so now what I need to do is go ahead and take my uh, super glue here and what I'm doing is take that off but I'm just going to go ahead and take some super glue and we're just going to go ahead and put it right onto this. Okay, so we're going to get this glued in here and get it on all, all portions of it here. And the cool thing about this gel is that it gets in there and it fills in the gap real well. And, uh, yeah, it works good, man. This is some sticky stuff. But uh, the other side of that is <clears> that we want to make sure our glue is, is somewhat smooth. So we don't want any big glops of it because when we go ahead and paint our uh, our scaffolding, you don't want these you know big globs of uh, dried glue under your paint. So kind of work it down a little bit, smooth it out. Um, you could take even a, a fine brush if you had a a garbage brush or something. You could you could use that. So what we're doing is just put a little bit of glue down, and now I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this baking soda and exacto, and we're just gonna go ahead and put some of this right over the top. And what that's gonna do it is going to work as an accelerant and it'll help fill the gap a little bit too. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that down in there on each one of these. If I can get any more out of here, geez. So 
There we go. A little bit there. And get that one right in there. Let's go ahead and tap it. Give it a couple minutes. We'll unmask it. And we'll go ahead and finish up the other one. So when we come back, we'll have these guys all glued. And we'll get ready for the next step. Cool. Now we have our sides all glued together. So they're all nice and dry. So the next thing we need to go ahead and do is take your, your uh, side. Let me get these guys off. And again, using the grid that's down here, we'll go ahead and line this up. Okay. And then tape it down. So what we're... What we're doing now is we're securing this into place so we can utilize the grid that's that's on our cutting board. And we're gonna go ahead and put in just a little bit of structure left to complete the sides of our scaffold. So once you have that set in and make sure it's all set up onto the grid itself, then you can go ahead and start cutting these pieces. Now. These are just kind of laying in here. And what I've done is just got everything trimmed in and I'm laying these down as such. And like we did with this, we're gonna go ahead and glue these pieces all in. So what we wanna do again is just make sure that everything is square and utilizing, get these these guys out of the way we'll set those here but what we're gonna do is get this all secured in and nice and true and then go ahead and glue that in and this area in the middle I pretty much just go ahead and and take my dowel and figure out where I'm going to be and then just go ahead and trim that out and fit it for each one um, you know your measurement might be off just a hair so if you if you tried to go ahead and say oh it's going to be x length it might fit at one part it may not fit on the other so i have found out that <laughs> just through trying out trial and error that to just go ahead and fit each piece you know and proceed that way uh saves you a lot more headache so what i'm going to do is go ahead and get these all glued in and then set my ladder pieces in and again using the grid that's down here we can actually work this out so say let's just go ahead and figure this out real quick so if we set him in the middle like so and then we get these two other pieces and we split the distance in here all right so he's right there and we get this other guy right down in here. We can get that all glued in and, you know, there we go. It kind of looks like the side of a scaffold. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this and this one and these remaining two so that everything is, is all set to go. And we come back We'll have that done and we'll start to actually assemble it and get our cross braces in. Okay, so now we have our sides all complete. So at this point, what I wanna do is go ahead in these areas that the, uh, the baking soda kind of loaded up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take my sandpaper and I'm just gonna go ahead and dress those out. And what I'm doing is just kind of smoothing it out. You'll notice when the uh, baking soda comes in here a lot of times it'll kind of ball up just a little bit so what we want to do is just kind of smooth that out just a little bit so that when we apply our paint on it it uh it blends in it's not a you won't have this like a uh, little glob of of super glue and and uh and baking soda there so we'll just go ahead and dress these up a little bit on both sides, the areas that you, you put your glue in and uh, get it smoothed out. And then we'll go ahead and take it to the next step. So you can see that here's a good one right here. So 
you see here on the edge where it's kind of all up like that, just go ahead and take your sandpaper, hit it like so. You can see how it just starts smoothing it out. So that's what we want. So we'll just go ahead and smooth that out. When we come back, we'll go ahead and get these guys attached. So now I have all this sanded and dressed up all my edges. So now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is attach these two guys together. Now remember when I talked about you could have just ran a solid piece. So if you did that, you don't have to worry about this point. But I kind of like the idea of putting this together and having a little bit of a seam right here at both spots. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and attach these together, both of these, and just go ahead and glue it with some super glue. And I just got a small little toothpick here. And I'm just going to roll some on here at the edge. Both of these guys. And then just glue it together. So do it like so. Line this guy up. And get it set right there. Like so. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and let this dry. Glue the other one, and uh, when we come back, we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can't get these two guys attached to each other. So now we have both sides glued together, and they match up pretty good. And you can see that little bit of a line there, so hey, it kind of looks like it's two pieces. Now, what I want to go ahead and do before I do anything else is I'm going to go ahead and take some silver paint. Now... This is a uh, acrylic and it's uh it's called golden. It's it's a nice acrylic and it this is a metallic silver. And what I want to do is go ahead and make this look like it's a, uh, you know, it's a steel scaffolding. Now, you could paint it a different color, you know, yellow, red, I mean, the rainbow, you you could paint whatever color you want, but I'm going to go ahead and use silver on this. And why I'm painting this silver right now is because when I go to put my plank on the scaffold, these areas right in here where I'm going to have my plank at, well, it's going to be hard to get silver up in there. So, or the, the paint color that I want. So what I want to do is get at least all those areas that are going to have plank on them with the silver paint so i can go ahead and then attach my plank and then we can address the color of the plank later on but this is just a little bit of a, a safety precaution and it makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to try to paint everything around when it's all when it's all put together so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and shake this up a little bit and uh Take my silver paint and just go ahead and give this thing a nice coat and uh, we'll let it dry and when it's all dry we'll come back and uh, we'll get these two guys looking more like a scaffold. So now we have our sides of our scaffold all painted up and we have that silver paint on there so now we're ready to go ahead and start connecting these two pieces together. So let's go ahead and set these off to the side. And what I've done is I've taken our uh, 1 8 by uh, uh, th 3 fourths or 3 quarter um, inch balsa and I've went ahead and cut it into lengths of four and a half inches. And why I've done that is at four and a half inches it makes this plank like a 12 foot plank. So at 12 feet, and we put this up, it'll actually make a nice spread as far as putting these putting these two together. You know, look proportionate. So let's go ahead and set these guys back down. So what I'm doing is is a slicing these into uh, four and a half inches, and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and mark on the edge of them. I'm going to come a quarter inch in and put a line. And why I'm going to do that, that's going to be the line that when I glue it will sit 
right up in here. It's just kind of a visual aid so I can make sure that everything is correct. So I'm gonna go through and I'll mark a couple of these with a line at a quarter inch in. So I have my little pencil here in that. And you can either use a ruler or if you have one of these cutting mats, each one of these little squares right here is a quarter inch. So if I just set that like so, I can take this and just go ahead and make a mark at a quarter inch on both sides. And then with these two marked, we'll use that to glue onto here and get this thing set equally distance from each other. So we come back, we'll go ahead and start gluing these onto that and get it all, uh, make it start looking like something. All right, so now we have our planks cut and we have them measured out. And next thing we need to do is go ahead and start gluing these on our, on our scaffold. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a little bit of uh, super glue and see so here, get some out of this uh, the cap right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead on the top, over here on the side, just go ahead and put a little bit like so. Let me set this guy. Yeah, we can get him to balance, there we go. And I'm just gonna take it where that line's at and I'm just gonna go ahead and place it right on there like that now while this is still a little wet let's go ahead and set this on the side i'm going to go ahead now and take the other side and you want to kind of decide how you want them to line up if you want it reverse or or whatever i'm going to match it the same on both sides so get this again grab just a little bit it on here and we're going to glue it right like there okay so now we have these two guys set now again since we have this this cutting board we can utilize the grid that's on here to make sure that everything is lined up okay so we go like that pretty straight and if we don't allow this to, to dry too much we can still manipulate this top when we do that to get this other board on there so now I'm going to take this board and I'm going to put that board right up here on top so I'm going to take my super glue again this time I'm going to apply it right to the board itself so I can set it just the way I want it. And this will uh, just allow me a little bit more control when I go to place this in. So get that set up there. It gets a little tricky, man. Sometimes you wish you had three hands or four hands instead of just two, but we can make this work. I know we can got to breathe so okay there we go we got that guy on there we got that guy right there and we'll let him set make sure we've we've got this sitting on our lines and let's see here he's all lined up yeah stay there okay so now that this is all lined up, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it set for just a little bit. And uh, we come back, we'll start putting in the other boards. All right, we're back. So we have that glued up on top and if we go like this, we can see how that kind of lines up. Now I'm gonna put that guy back down. And what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and put one board, at least one board on the bottom right now. So I have a board here that I went ahead and measured off and I'm gonna stick this guy just down just a little bit. Like I'm gonna have a couple planks down here on the bottom. 
Um, I don't think I'm gonna come all the way across with anything, just, just kind of a little platform up just a little bit. So the cool thing about making these scaffolds that you guys can put it wherever you want. If you want it up a little bit, if you want it down, it's, you know, it's a lot like a, a real scaffolding that way. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and just set this glue on this board. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna give our uh, scaffold a little bit more strength when I uh, put it up on end. So before everything gets set too much, I just wanna go ahead and put this guy in there. So if we get him like so, get him put right, come on, right here. And the cool thing about super glue and balsa is that it really sticks fast. So we, uh, that can be a blessing and it can be a curse too. If you, if you make a mess up and, uh, you got to try to correct it. A lot of times it grips so quick, it'll actually rip your balsa wood apart. So there we go. So at this point, this is where we're at. Now what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and take the rest of my planks and I'm just gonna go ahead and just line them right here across the top. So when we come back, I'll go ahead and have these guys lined up the rest of the way and uh, we'll start working on our, our cross braces. Okay, so now we have our boards on here and it's starting to look like a scaffold. Now if you notice on the other side, I've already started to put in my cross braces. And you can just see how that really starts to, to finish it off. Now, it still needs to be painted and whatnot, but just that little bit of visual really makes a difference. Now, how did I make those, right? So what we're gonna do is go over to this other side over here, and we'll set that down. Now, what I like to do, again, is we're gonna use the, the shish kebab sticks, and if you look on here, you'll see that we have this upper support here. And if it comes down, there's the, the uh, line of our scaffold right here. So then we have this post on both sides. And these cross supports, if you've ever lifted scaffold, will, will mount right on the adjacent side of these cross supports. So we want one that's gonna go from here right over to this side right here okay so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and measure that out or just grab my you know my shisco op stick and just put a mark right here hold it with my finger or take a pencil and uh, let's see here now <laughs> this is if everything is nice and square and I've double checked this and everything is, is nice and square. If it is off a little bit, you're probably gonna wanna go and do both sides individually and then cut those, you know, individually from each other, not exactly the same length. But since we've already kind of gone through all this, we're already doing pretty good. So what we need to do is just go ahead and cut it off at that point. So what I'm gonna do is take my, my shears and just slice this off like so. And I'm gonna stick that off to the side because that's good stuff. We can use that in a little bit. And I'll set that there. And now I have my other side here and voila, they're same length. So I've already cut this one out prior. Now, what I also wanna do is find the center point. So at the center point, if we take out our trusty ruler, I'm looking at roughly about 11 and a half centimeters. So if I split this, just to cheat a little bit, and I split it between the 12 and the one, I can find six, which is my center point. Put a mark like so. And now I have my center point. Now the reason why we want to have our center point is because if I take this and let's see here, let me grab this guy and they are not notched or anything else. And if they lay on each other, 
they're going to be laying up on top. And if we put this guy down like so, and we set, he actually lays down. But if we try to set him up on top, he's going to be teetering. So in order to fix that, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and notch out the middle of this. So if I grab these guys, let me bring this guy here. You'll see on this, I've actually notched both sides. Okay. So what we can do then is put this right on top of each other like so. And if it lays down, let me get this the correct way. They have a, a pattern to them. If I set him here and he goes here, and then this guy goes like so, and there, we can get it to set. So what we need to do now at this point, let me get this guy off to the side, and we have found our center point. Let me set him here is that I have my Dremel with a kind of a drum, uh, a sanding drum, and this is kind of the, the diamond, uh, oh, whatchamacallit. Well, it's it's the sanding drum for my, for my Dremel, and it's the metal one, it's the smaller diameter. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and make this a notch in the inside here. So I'll just go ahead and hit that, and we come back, We'll, uh, we'll start finishing off the other sides of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and notch this out. It's gonna get kind of loud, so I'm gonna turn off the video. When we come back, we'll see how that all matches up. Okay, so now I have both those notched in the center. So we can go ahead and put these together in there, you know, now it'll lay flat. But if you've ever looked at a, uh, a scaffold, on the ends of these cross supports. So if we bring this guy over, the ends of these cross supports, the, they'll flange down. It's kind of like crushed into it and they would slip on top of a pin. So you would take this cross support, you know, slip it on there and there was a pin right here that would pop through with a little bit of a, uh, a key on it that would hold it into place. So at this point, you could go ahead and take these and just go ahead and put it on it and it would look great, but I want to go ahead and notch these ends just a little bit, just to kind of, eh, I think it looks cool. You know, you really start looking at this and you start seeing the seams and all of a sudden you look over here and go, wow, those are notched too. That's really cool. So on this other side, set him down. We have now our, our cross support. So <clears throat> Kind of important when you're doing this portion of it, and I found this out through trial and error, is that if you keep these guys together and you go ahead and sand these right here on the side, they won't roll on you. So you can keep your area where it is, is upright. So if we take this guy, what I'm trying to explain. Okay, let's see here. So if we put that, bring it over here the ends that are that are flattened out okay if you try to do these individually and lay them lay them down and take your dremel and try to sand those edges a lot of times what will happen is that they'll it'll roll so one side will not be the same as the other side you'll have one side here flat and a lot of times on the other side when you go to do it it won't line up all that great and it'll be off. So a good way to alleviate that is to um, set these guys down here, is to set this like so, bring it over to the edge of the table with your Dremel and then sand those lightly and flatten out those spots and then just work it around. So once you get that one, then turn it, do this side, and just turn it and just make sure that it's you have pressure onto it so it doesn't it doesn't roll on you so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and sand those out with my dremel right here just kiss it on the end flatten it out just a little bit so it looks like the the ends of those supports and we come back we'll go ahead and get those glued onto our scaffold so now we have this guy all set and you can see on the ends here where I went ahead and sanded those flat. 
So when we set it down there, it just kind of gives that little extra little bit of detail. So at this point, what we need to do is glue these guys into place. So what I'm gonna do is take one of these little chunks of stick that I have, and shish kebab. Nice thing about those, they have a little point. So makes it nice for using it for glue. So I'll just go ahead and put this little dab. And what I'm gonna do is just set it right here up on top. Just give it a little, little bit of glue here. Right there. I'm gonna do all four corners. So. All right, so now we got that, set him. Now, make sure when you set these guys down that you, you have them set correctly because you've only done the one side, the other side doesn't have it. And also, there's gonna be a pattern to it. You're gonna definitely gonna have a lower piece and an upper piece. So just keep that in mind when you do it. And also, the rule of thumb is if you have a matched pair, keep that match pair together. Don't put them in a big pile and then try to, to figure it out because if your lengths are a little bit different, you're gonna make sure that you have the two that you need for that specific area. So here we go. So we got this guy and what we're gonna do is just go ahead and set him on here like so. Get him lined up. And now we have him there. Let's grab a little bit more glue. What we're gonna do with this is set this right here in the middle. Now we're gonna take this guy. We'll put him here. Right there. And just kind of hold him here for a sec. So I kind of made that one a little bit tight. So there was a little bit of flex there. So I'll make sure this is kind of set before I let go. If we let go of it, there we go. So we have our cross support. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the lower one up and we come back, we still need to get some fall protection on the top of our scaffold. So I'll finish up this cross support and then we'll come back up and we'll finish up the top with our All right, fall protection. so we're getting closer, right? So I got my little guy up here. So we got the camera and got a camera dude. And you can see if I turn this without knocking him down, we get all our cross braces in. So what do we need to do now? Well, he's kind of up there all solo and I'd like to go ahead and put a railing around this just to go ahead and trim it off. So one of the reasons why I have him sitting up on top is so that we can get kind of a reference of how high our railing needs to be. We have our camera up there. We don't want a railing that's gonna be high and it's gonna block the view of the camera. So to make that, you know, to kind of work, we're gonna want a, a railing that's, you know, only about so high up there, okay? So if we figure this out, uh, let's see here. We'll use it on, on centimeters. So if we, we put this right here and try to hold it in one piece, if we come up, let's see here. If, we're, if we have a railing height of around two centimeters, okay? So two centimeters will put us right into this area in here, which is just high enough that it doesn't impede any type of, of camera angle and it's going to be high enough that it's actually going to look like some type of fall protection across the top on that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut some of these shish kebab sticks again and we're going to go ahead and glue them just right up here on top on all four corners and then connect that with a crossbar all the way across the top and that'll pretty much you know finish it off. At that point, you know, once we get that on there, it's pretty much gonna be down to to painting and, and staining our, our wood here. And uh, it'll be about ready to go on the layout. So 
what I'm going to do is go ahead and cut these guys at two centimeters. I'm going to cut four of them and then I'm going to measure my distance between my points. So on uh, from here to that guy is right around looks like roughly about eight and a half centimeters. So eight and a half centimeters on both sides. Yep. And our length, take him down. Our length will be at uh, 10 and a half. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my two centimeter uprights and then go ahead and cut my railings. And we come back, we'll go ahead and get that all glued in. All right, so now we got our, our fall protection up there, and that's all glued in. So at this point, all we need to do is just wait for this to dry. So once it all dries, we can come back, and we'll go ahead and finish out painting these areas that we put in afterward. And we need to go ahead and stain our, our boards. And uh, it's about ready to put on the layout. So we come back. We'll go ahead and, and uh, do some painting. So at this point, everything's nice and dry, and it's time to go ahead and get the rest of this little stuff painted. So what I'm going to use on the silver is the same stuff I did before, and this is a, it's an acrylic silver, um, and, you know, it works really good. So uh, a little bit more spendy. It's called Golden Fluid Acrylics, and uh, this is really nice stuff. Um, if I was painting it a solid color, uh, probably just a regular basic acrylic would work fine. But I found that for metallics and whatnot, if you spend a little bit more money on the acrylic paint, um, you know, it looks pretty good. So uh, just an option. So what I'm going to do is go in and finish off painting our, our crossbars and everything else. And I'm going to make sure that I stay away from my planks because I have uh, something else that I'm going to do with my planks besides just putting uh, some paint on it. So we come back, we'll have all this stuff painted up. Okay. And uh, so at this point, we'll start I went ahead and I have all my silver painted out and, you know, looks pretty good. So you can leave your boards just natural, all clean looking or hit it with some type of oil or, or varnish. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this dark walnut and hit it with that. And I'm going to kind of concentrate it in between certain areas to kind of give a little bit of darkness in, in, the, in the planks and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, once this is all painted up, she's pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it with this varnish. And uh, we'll see if there's any last little, little things we want to do to it. But otherwise... I think it's about ready to put on that layout. So I have everything stained with my stain on there and you can see how I kind of blotched it out. But uh, one thing I like to do is kind of tone it down a little bit and give it a little bit of aging to it. So what I do, and one of the reasons why I like using the, uh, the dark walnut uh, oil is that this stuff's pretty versatile. So when you come into say our areas over here where we have some of our junctions and stuff and you know it looks good it's all nice and bright but I want to kind of age it down a little bit so it looks you know a little bit worn it looks like it's been around for a little bit I mean I don't want it all rusty looking but at the same point a little bit of grime on it would you know would probably help it a little bit so what I do is I take a little bit of this Danish oil and I'm just going to go ahead and hit it just just a little bit and you'll, you'll see what happens here. So we're just gonna kind of hit some of these corner areas. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna kind of seep down into it and uh, go down into some of our um, uh, nooks and crannies, right? So now I'm gonna take a, a, a firm brush, a dry brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of clear off the top. And while I'm doing this, I'm dragging it along the path of it. And what this is going to do is give it that metallic. It's going to tone it down a little bit. 
and it's going to give it just kind of the, the this light glaze onto it that that gives it just a little bit of an aged look to it you know not not anything too drastic but just enough you know just so when we get down to these edges and stuff it kind of tones it down a little bit you can see a little bit of difference between the two it might be hard on a camera to see it but in person you really start to notice it when it's right up against something that's fresh versus where this has been drug across so i'm just going to kind of go around to solve my little nooks and crannies and stuff and kind of work this out and then the area where the ladder area is on the uh on the scaffold and take some of this and we're just gonna put it on here so it looks like someone has climbed on it you know it's not it's got a little bit of grime on it where they've been up and down this ladder a few times maybe taking a pee break or something so i'm just gonna go ahead and hit this like so and just kind of grime it up you know just kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of character so just like so and that just kind of gives it just a little bit more so I'm gonna go around here dress it up here and there and uh, we come back there's one more thing that I want to okay. do so now we have it all kind of aged out and it kind of gives it a little bit of a tarnished look to it so it's not so bright and green or uh, new <laughs> So now that we have that, and when you're, when you're doing it, just don't only do the outside, actually kind of reach through the inside as well and get the backside of things. So if you're looking at it, it'll, if you don't, you'll be looking at it, you'll see it tarnished on the outside, but if you look in the inside, all of a sudden it's new looking. So make sure that you, if you do this step to do both sides of it, kind of the inside and the outside, that way it just kind of gives a little bit of balance and it, it doesn't, you know, glare out at you with the uh, the fresh the freshness of of something in the inside. If if that made any sense, but what I like to do one last thing. If you notice on my my little camera and stuff, it has the logo of the old Wide World of Sports. And uh, what I want to do is make the scaffold, you know, part of that. So what I've done is is created just a little billboard or you know placard then i'm just going to go ahead and, and glue on here now you could use any type of advertisement if you want you know if you're in the bbc you could uh the bbc uh news broadcast or or whatever but what i'm doing is just going to go ahead and get this guy on there and i think this will really kind of uh, uh, wrap this thing up so let me just go ahead and add a little super glue onto this and cool thing is is we can put that down here and since we made sure that these areas were nice and and flush and level this will work so we'll get that on there and now we'll take our logo and make sure that we get it centered like so and there we go let me get that on here a little bit more let that dry and now we'll have our our advertising of wide world of sports on our scaffold so i'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and we'll get it up, up there on the layout and see what she looks like We made ourselves a scaffold and you know it turned out pretty cool so you know what we got it on the layout we need to go down and take a look at it so let's go take a gander at it <laughs>
guy he's happy now he has a scaffolding to sit on that's just glorious but besides that if you like this video like it share it with others and subscribe to my channel and I guess there's a little bell up there and I guess if you do a comment and you hit the bell I don't know what happens but yeah give it a shot see what happens and on top of that if you go up in the corner up on the banner there's a little thing called Facebook. If you hit that, it'll bring you into the Facebook group and we can correspond. And you can share what I'm, you're working on, I can share what I'm working on, and you know, it's pretty cool. But also, I went ahead and added an Instagram on that as well. So my own Instagram channel, which is linked to all this, is on there as well. So if you don't have Facebook, you have Instagram, you can go ahead and click on that. If you got both, click on both of them. Hey, it's all good. So. But besides that, you know, if you notice at the beginning of the video, I have some a new intro and I have some new intro music. And special thank you goes out to my friend Kevin Sharp from Metro 37 Recording Studio. And he went ahead and composed the music for the front and he put my voice in it. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of fun. You know, we're a bunch of older guys playing with cars and yeah. It's fun. Toys are fun. So, hey, but on the flip note, yeah, pretty cool. So we got that there. It's not going to be staying there or scaffold. We got a new area that we're going to be constructing, and that's going to be coming up pretty soon on some future videos. So keep in touch. Keep tuned in. I'll try to produce another video here shortly, and we'll start on the new area. And... You know, there's a bunch of cool stuff going on right now. So on with that note, <laughs> I'm getting tongue-tied. I probably should get going. I'll catch you guys later. And thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>